to yet another video on my channel. So in today's video, we will be doing a bookstore vlog. These are some of my favorite videos to film. So the plan for today is we're going to Indigo, which is our local bookstore. It's kind of like the Barnes and Nobles, but for Canada. And then we're also gonna go to HomeSense. I've never heard anyone talk about buying books from HomeSense. The books that you can find for $25 at Indigo, you can find for $10, $15 at HomeSense. Let's go to the two bookstores.
view she could see her building Try to tell her I know how I feel it Keep me flowing when I'm on my back Slow me down when I'm in Welcome to the book haul portion of today's video. You guys know how it goes. Bookstore vlog first, book haul video second. So let me show you the huge crazy amount of books that I bought even though I am on a book buying ban that lasted for maybe two weeks. I'm swearing off buying books for the rest of this year which isn't that long. That's four months. That is it. We are done. Okay because I have more books coming. I ordered books on Amazon, I thrifted some, so there's like a good, I think, I wanna say a good extra 30 books that are being added to my physical TBR, which is already at 75 books, and we are not nearly reading as fast as I'm buying books. Is that a, is that a cart that you guys hear? I did, yes. I bought a TBR cart. I'm gonna have a video that's coming up for that. So if you guys do wanna see buying, setting up my TBR cart, if you don't wanna miss out, then don't forget to subscribe. This cart is actually so convenient. Like literally all my books just on the cart instead of in a stack where it's falling. I went to chapters and I picked out Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Heck of an intimidating book. I don't even... I'm never in the mood to pick up romance books to begin with, but a romance book that is 553 pages, thick as hell. I just know I'm like never going to pick this up. How much can go on in a romance book for it to be this freaking big? In fantasy books, makes sense. World building, introduction to characters, etc, etc. Romance? It's about twins. There's Naomi and there's Tina. So Tina is like the chaotic twin. She has an infant that Naomi had no idea about and Tina just ups and leaves one day. So it's up to Naomi to take care of her niece or nephew, her niece. And then there's a neighbor who is like a very grumpy type of man who I guess helps her take care of the infant. That is what I know based off of other booktubers oh sorry it is not an infant it's an 11 year old child basically that is the gist of it so you have the grumpy neighbor who is helping her take care of her niece who she didn't know existed who her twin left her to take care of when she just up and left stay tuned for if i ever do pick this book up i don't know why i keep buying romance books when i'm a romanticy girly because i'm never in the mood to read romance and then these books accumulate on my shelf and contribute to my physical TBR. I have my first L. Kennedy series. So this is the Briar U series. I don't know the order of this, but I have The Dare, The Play, The Chase, and The Risk. Are these all about different girls? Am I going through these, all of them? The Risk is about a bad girl who is the daughter of Briar's head hockey coach who is absolutely not willing to hook up with a player from the rival team and that's who Jake Connelly is. I require his help to secure a much coveted internship. I need Connelly to be my fake boyfriend. For every fake date, he wants a real one. Everyone says opposites attract and they must be right because there's no logical reason why I'm so drawn to Colin Fitzgerald. I don't usually go for tattoo covered video gaming, hockey playing nerd jocks who think I'm flighty and superficial. It doesn't help that he's buddy buddy with my brother and that his best friend has a crush on me. And then I just moved in with them Oh, did I not mention we're roommates? They're really cringy when I read out loud. Like this is a synopsis that I would never read to any of my non-book reading friends. But I feel like any book synopsis is just cringy. Like you just sound like a nerd when you're reading them out loud. But everyone here is a book fan, so I feel no judgment. Everyone says I'm a screw up. No more screwing up. No more screwing period. 
As the new team captain, I need a philosophy, hockey, and school now, women later. Oh, this is about a guy. Which means that I, Hunter Davenport, am officially going celibate. There's nothing in the rule book that says I can't be friends with a woman. And I won't lie, my new classmate, Demi Davis, is one cool chick. We're paired up on a year-long school project, but I'm confident I can resist her. Ooh, interesting. Everyone likes a challenge. College was supposed to be my chance to get over my ugly duckling complex and spread my wings. I wound up in a sorority full of mean girls, so when my sisters issue a challenge, I can't say no. The dare is to the hottest new hockey player in the junior class. He's the one you fall for before you learn that guys like him don't give girls like me a second glance. Rather than laughing in my face, he does me a solid by letting me take him upstairs to pretend we're getting busy. Even crazier, now he wants to keep pretending. I have to admit, I think these intrigue me the most. Out of all the romance books that I own, I feel like these really just pulled me in with the synopsis because usually I find romance books, synopses are just not interesting. Not in the way that fantasy books interest me, but these I'm excited to read. Let me know if this is good. Also, please tell me the order because I'm very confused. I think they're all standalones. And then I went to HomeSense. So the first one I got is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Her stepfather decides enough is enough. So he cuts her off and sends her and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar. Pepper hasn't even been in Westport five minutes when she meets Brendan Taggart, who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. How bad could it really be? She's determined to show her stepfather and the hot, grumpy local that she's more than just a pretty face. If you guys have been watching my videos, you would know that I have Hook, Line, and Sinker, but it is the second book. And someone commented, thank you so much for letting me know that I should read this one first. The next one that I have is Loathe to Love You by Ali Hazelwood. This is three novellas. One is about an environmental engineer who discovers that scientists should never cohabitate. We also have Stuck With You, which is about a civil engineer and her nemesis. And then we have Below Zero about a NASA aerospace engineer's frozen heart, which melts as she lies injured and stranded at a remote Arctic research station. And the only person willing to undertake the dangerous rescue mission is her longtime rival. I really just want to collect Allie Hazelwood books because I find they are so gorgeous. I just want like a stack on my bookshelf of Allie Hazelwoods. I feel like they're so pretty. And then I picked up this one. It was so cute. Vampires, Hearts, and Other Dead Things. It's about Victoria and her dad who have shared a love of the undead since the first vampire revealed his existence on live TV. But when her dad is diagnosed with terminal cancer, Victoria vows to find a vampire herself so that she can become one and then save her father. She meets Nicholas, a mysterious young man who might give her what she desires. But first, he needs Victoria to prove she loves life enough to live forever. I thought this was such a cute read. Like, it just sounds like such a wholesome, very cute type of read. The next book that I picked up was Lisa Jewell's Invisible Girl. I really only picked this up because it was $9.99. It retails for $37. This is why I love Home Sense. Owen Pick's life is falling apart. He has just been suspended from his job after accusations of sexual misconduct. He is inadvertently sucked into the dark world of involuntary celibate forums where he meets the charismatic, mysterious, and sinister Bryn. Across the street from Owen live the Fours family. Kate and Rowan have always had a bad feeling about their neighbor, Owen. There's something off about him. Their teenage daughter swears he followed her home from the train station one night. Meanwhile, young Sapphire Maddox spent three years as a patient of Rowan Fours. Feeling abandoned when their therapy ends, she searches for other ways to maintain her connection with him. On Valentine's night, Sapphire disappears, and the last person to see her alive is Owen. Honestly, I feel like there's a bit too many characters that were introduced in the synopsis, like too many important characters. There's the mom, Kate, there's the dad, Rowan, there's the neighbor, Owen, and then there's the daughter, and then there's Sapphire, like just way too many people. I'm really not sure about this one. So I have Vespertine by Margaret Robertson. I really just bought this book because it was $8 and also because I find the cover is honestly like I was mesmerized. So this is about Artemisia who is training to be a gray sister, a nun who cleanses the bodies of the deceased so that their souls can pass on. When her convent is attacked by possessed soldiers, Artemisia defends it by awakening an ancient spirit bound to a saint's relic. Oh, she also wrote Sorcery of Thorns, which 
I've been really wanting to read. It doesn't grip me as much as books usually do. I think because there is no romance. And the last book that I got isn't like, it's more of like a, a psychology book. It, okay, it is. It is a psychology book and it's by Brene Brown who is very, very much known in the psychology community. If there are any psych majors who watch my videos, Please let me know if you guys have heard of this book, if you've read it, if you've heard of Brene and what you guys think of her. It's a really gorgeous book. So this one basically just maps a bunch of human emotions. There was one passage that explained the difference between envy and jealousy. And I feel like most people get those two confused, but they're very, very different. Envy is when someone else has something that you want. So let's say someone has really shiny blonde hair and I'm like I really wish I had blonde hair but jealousy only applies to relationships so being afraid of losing a relationship that you already have if anyone's into psychology but it's not self-help it's just psychology that is the whole bookstore haul we have a total of 11 books today. I'm gonna end this video here because it's getting very, very long. So thank you so much for watching yet another video and staying tuned with me. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And let me know which of these books you've read. I'll see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye.